calling back in now. He was probably very confused because we were talking Dancing with the Stars, but let's welcome the man of the hour, drummer extraordinaire. You might know him from the band King's X. Let's welcome the Totally Gym Radio, the one, the only, Mr. Jerry Gaskill. How you doing, Jerry? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Good, man. Good. You know, it, it's it's. I guess this is kind of like a weird segue, too, because we were just talking um, – uh, a lot of uh, people in my family right now are going through some health problems and uh, heart mm. issues, and we were just saying people are like everybody. It just seems like everybody we find out like every day, like somebody's getting sick or they're saying cancer or heart and this and that. And you had some health scares over the last couple of years with a couple of heart attacks. I did, and it's funny that you mentioned it and you were talking about that because the way you mentioned it, as I say, ever since the first heart attack, I realized that. Uh, we never know what's brewing inside of our bodies. You know, we could feel great one day, but we could be actually dying. So I think it's right. really, uh, yeah, I think it's an important thing that we go go to a doctor and have our bodies checked out. Because I, I felt like I was doing great, and the next thing I know, I, I'm lying on the floor dead. You know, so oh. we never know what's what's inside. So you had like no family. kind of warning or nothing. You 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 felt fine, and then all of a sudden, boom. Well. It's a weird thing because the whole weekend, I, as I think back, I do remember feeling a little strange. I don't remember feeling any pain or anything like that, but I felt strange. And um, But me going down and the actual heart attack itself, I have no recollection. But my wife was there. She saw all that happened. When she saw me go down, she saw me die. And I, to this day, have no recollection of that. Which I'm very thankful oh. for. I feel that like I have this so scary for her. death now. Very scary for her. Way more scary for her than it was for me. Since I have no re- recollection. <laughs> right. You know, and now, now I feel like I have this kinship with death. It's a strange wow. thing. It's a beautiful that, thing. <laughs> but then you had, and then you had a, a second heart attack a couple of years later. I did. I had another one. I went into a hospital, and they found this nodule on my throat. They wanted to make sure it was okay, it wasn't, you know, cancerous or whatever. And um, during the recovery of that, I ended up having another heart attack and had to have a double bypass. Oh, it's crazy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a little over a year ago now. But but I'm doing great. I'm really doing great. Awesome. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing, man. I wouldn't change a thing. Now, when something like that happens, I mean, especially um, – being a drummer, I mean, you're exerting your body when you're playing your instrument. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Like, how soon before you say to yourself, like, when you, once you get out of, like, the, the thought of being, all right, like, I'm not going to die, I'm going to be okay, like, but can I play drums? Well, uh, when I was in the hospital, I, of course I thought about it. I thought, well, maybe I'll just never play again, you know. Because I, I, cause I thought if I'm not, if I can't get up there and be 100, percent you know, I'm not going to do it at all. You know, I, right. I, 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 I thought I'm never going to go on the stage, and uh, it'd be like, oh, he used to be so great, you know, but he's a, he's such a trooper. He's up there really trying. I would never do that. I just never play it yet. Right. You know, but as time went on, I realized, you know, I'm getting stronger, and this is what I do, and I have to do it. So I did it, and it. It seems like it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. And, you know, it's funny too, because like as I'm going through and I'm researching yourself and I'm looking up all this stuff about you, and I'm reading, I'm like, okay, well, this guy had two heart attacks and he's still trucking, he's still going through, he's still making beautiful music, he's still playing drums. And then I hear about Hurricane Sandy, and you lost everything. I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> this has to be the most determined guy and strong-willed person there is walking the earth. Because, and I'm going to tell my co-host Nick this: I, I, Hurricane Sandy a couple years ago, uh, he he lost his home and all, and all his possessions. Well, that's true. Here's what here's what my wife said. She said 2012. She says it the best. She says 2012 is a banner year for us. Was well, a banner year for us. First, first I died. <laughs> then we got married, and then we became homeless. <laughs> that was our 2012. Jeez. Wow. But we've been together for uh, 
almost 15 years now, but we just decided to get married in 2012. We, we, we talked about getting married way before that. We were engaged, the whole thing. But, you know, things happen, like me dying and things like that kind of, you know, put a damper on it for a second. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so things are great now, man. Yeah, things are great. We, you know, I died, That's we, awesome. got married, became homeless. But everything's better now. We've got, a, we got a, a nice home that we live in. We were able to buy a house in another part of the town, or not the town that we lived in, but another area of this of where we live. And we okay. just love that. Everything, everything's great. And I'm healthy. Awesome. And things are great. Yep. Well, uh, the scary part is, I, I guess, you know, you know, that old saying goes, things happen for a reason. So, But it seems like it all works out in the end for you. It worked out positively. Absolutely. And, and I think... I think it can work out positively for everybody if we just make it happen. We have to. We right. can't let things take over. We have to take over them. And it's not always easy. It wasn't always easy for me. And True. still, it's not always easy. But we have to move forward and we have to, you know, find the good things to keep us going. We all have to do that. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. So. The, the, your new solo album came out a few weeks ago. It's called Love and Scars. And something else I, I saw about that, you've been working on this album for 10 years? Well, yeah, kind of, yeah. I started working with Dan, Dan Carcos, D.A. Carcos, probably around 2006. We got together for the first time, and that's when I realized we need to make a record together. And, <laughs> uh, and we've been working on this music ever since. Wow. But, you know, a lot of things have happened along the way to kind right. of keep it from going on and and but but it's here man we did it and and it's and it's out it's been out for like a week and a half now almost two weeks and uh we're just totally excited about it man we really are happy with what we did you know it came out kind of like what we wanted it to be <laughs> nice nice yeah i mean it's getting great reviews and it sounds awesome it really does. You oh, really got to be proud of yourself. Uh, I, I'm just so excited about it, man. I feel like I'm a fan myself, you know. And, and people do seem to be loving it. You know, it's all over the Billboard charts, and it's just incredible. Very, very happy. Just got to keep awesome. it going. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, the, the one thing too with this album is you got a lot of a. Uh, it's kind of like an all-star lineup you got on there. I mean, Billy Sheehan helped you out. Uh, uh, Phil Kegley, Virus, so Carl Kegley. Slick, Kegley. Yeah, I mean, you got all these pe- people uh, on there helping you out. So, I mean, that's got to be really cool, too. Oh, it's really, really cool. Everybody everybody that I asked, and even the people who came to me and asked me if they oh, found okay, cool. the record, uh, they all just did the most perfect thing. I've been, I've been saying it over and over, but everybody just added exactly what was needed. I mean, I had visions for each of these people. You know, I just heard their talent on this record, on certain songs, and they just did it beyond my expectations. And it's it's just beautiful. Now, yeah, when, so, when so something like that, that today. when you get something like that, though, where like when you have all these great musicians coming to you, I, I mean, how do you like know where to place them? You know what I mean, like. All right, I think I got this for you, and I think I got this for you. Or, I mean, do you all just sit down and just start playing stuff? I, I mean, how do you place everybody in the right spot? Well, Dan and I have been working on this record for a long time, and we had the songs basically constructed the way we wanted them, and all the parts in place. Mm-hmm. And uh, once we did that, I, it's like I just felt and could see that these certain people, like Earl Slick, for instance, on the two songs he played, I just believed that he needed to be on those songs. Right. And I, I, just, I just felt that I could see it. It was like a vision. <laughs> Earl needs to play on this. Same with Phil Kagan. Phil needs to play on this song. And they did, and I think I was right. You know? <laughs> every, time we, every time Dan and I went to somebody's house or had somebody do something, we kept thinking, man, we're batting a thousand, man. <laughs> it all just worked out so great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now, something else that people are really raving about on the album too is your vocals. How great oh, they sound! Really? Oh, yeah, that, thanks, that's what I'm man. seeing in all the reviews. Is everybody's really loving the vocals? And, and I was great. wondering, you know, it, 
it's something that you really don't get to do so much, like as a lead vocalist in um, in King's X. Is it something that you would like to do more of, possibly? Well, it's it's something that I definitely want to do when I do my own thing, because these are the songs that are coming out of me, and it's my voice. I feel needs to to say it. You know, the lyrics right. not me. So in that sense, I I, I want to sing. But as far as King's X, you know, I, I mean, Doug's a pretty good singer. <laughs> you know, he kind of he can probably handle that in that realm. I'll, I'll do some background vocals and maybe have a song or two on the record. But uh, it's not something I really aspire to do. It's just something yeah, I have okay. to do because I have these melodies in my head and I have these lyrics and these songs, so I have to sing them. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Now, how about even like uh, the songwriting? Because again, th- this is you. This is your album. This is you handling the songwriting. Whereas King's X, how much of it is you contributing, or is it just a group effort? Well, with King's X, it's 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 always a group effort, even if it's a song that somebody completely wrote by themselves, which is most often the case in King's X. So what happens is we all put ourselves into it. And even if it's exactly as uh, the person wrote it, once we all put our hands on it, it becomes a King's X song. And it just has that vibe no matter what. Right. And that's, that's the way King's X is. And, uh, but for this record, Love and Scars, all these songs are me and Dan together. I, I brought all the songs to Dan, and then he put himself into them. And... Uh, just it's just it's just like a I don't even know how to put it. But it's just this love fest of songwriting with Dan and I. You know, I, I just love working with him. I have never felt more comfortable sharing my ideas with anybody than I have Dan. And he gets it and you know, if he has a part to throw in there, it's always the right part and it always makes the song, you know, a better song and even I mean, it's always cohesive. It's not like this part just thrown in there. It's like the song has just extended itself in the direction right. it's supposed to go. And uh, so that's how this album came about. Yeah. Now, now that the album is out, though, do you still have like that creative uh, songwriting like process going through you? Like, are you constantly writing songs, whether it's ideas for King's X or yourself, or maybe a future album? No, I'm completely done writing songs now. <laughs> no, of course I do. I've already got new songs written. I've got old songs I want to want to redo. And uh, Dan and I are going to get together again, and we're going to write songs for the King's X record. And uh, it's uh, yeah, it's just an ongoing ongoing process. It'll always happen. It's just the way it is. I walk around the house, and a melody will come to my head. So therefore, I have to write a song. It, it's right. just it's just what I do. You know, that's awesome. Now, how yeah. about um, will you get to do any shows? Play well, any we're definitely talking about it. We're That'd talking cool. about it. It would be cool. I'd like to see it happen. Yeah, you know, it'd, be a, it'd be a lot of work again, but that's what it's all about—is working hard, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. you know that's yeah. the one thing where that I hate to see. Like, and, and I say this to like people like yourself who have you know you got your main project of King's X and one guy's branch off and will do like a side project or a solo project, a lot of times they don't get to even play one show of their music. And that would absolutely drive me nuts. It really would. Because <laughs> you work so hard on that music and you're so proud of it and you want pe- you want to see the people's expressions on their face or sing so you can see them sing along with that music. And a lot of times you guys don't get to do that. Well, I'm so excited about this record, and Dan's so excited about this record. I think we're just going to have to do some live shows. We have to, even if we just do one and broadcast this up the whole world, something. Right. We have to. We yeah. have to get on the stage, and we have to perform this music live. We have to rehearse. We have to get it right, and we 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 just have to. Uh, so, it's most likely going to happen. Don't know when, but it's going to have to be pretty soon, I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's the plan, man. I think we're going to do it. Cool. Now, also to the uh, the artwork for the album, 
it, it's mm. like kind of like a heart framed. Was there any like little uh, <laughs> specific thing with the heart? Was it for the uh, broken heart of love and scars, or was it like your little innuendo with your own heart? Yeah, it's all of those things, I think. It's, it's, it's just everything to do with the heart. I mean, the heart attacks definitely um, have a big part in that. And I, really, I, I felt that a heart needed to be somewhere on this record because, you know, the heart now is a big part of my life. <laughs> sure, sure. It's been, it's been something that's given me life and taken away my life at the same time. So the heart is very representative, I guess you could say, of the life I'm living now. So I I like the fact there's a heart on there. And it's in a frame. I love that. And I love that the frame's slightly askew. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm really happy with the artwork. I'm happy with everything about this year. I really am. That's that's awesome. That is so awesome. So I just want to... And the the artwork was done by Joe O'Brien from Rat Pack Records. He put that... Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So uh, what's the plans for you now for the rest of the year? Uh, just hang out at home with my dogs and my wife. <laughs> I like doing that. Just enjoy life. Do some life. shows here around town. Yeah, do some shows around town. Uh, you know, with some local players. Like Bob Berger, cool. for instance, who played on my record. He played bass okay. on the song Waking Up. I actually done a show with him this Saturday. Oh, nice. Where at? And that, that's always fun. Uh, in Red Bank, Red Bank, New Jersey. It was a little, okay. little pub. Yeah. Always fun. Always great players. And, uh, yeah, and just hang out. Just be at home and, you know, try to make the best of my life. Very good. And how about uh, any new music or uh, touring from King's X coming up in the new year? Or? Yeah, I think so. We're, we're, we're definitely talking about all of that, you know, doing some more shows. And we're definitely talking about doing another record. You know, we're, cool. I think we're actively pursuing that. And uh and I keep saying if anybody's holding it back it's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> well stop holding it back. You feel better now. Get get, get yeah, the well, work no, over there. It's not that. It's not that I don't feel good. I mean I feel fine. I feel great. I feel strong. You know, I just wanna be uh you know, I wanna be in the right frame of mind to make the next King's X record. I wanna feel good about it. I wanna feel good about me. I wanna feel good about the whole situation. Awesome. And right now, I've got, I'm, 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 you know, I'm really kind of getting into my record. You know, I'm very excited about Absolutely. that. I want to give that, let it breathe a little bit. You know, right? I want people, I want people yeah. to hear it. Well, you know what? Let's let's let people hear it because I got the tune "Far Away" uh, queued up, and uh, we're gonna play that for everybody. So, uh, okay. Jerry, I want to thank you for calling in, being a guest. Sure, man. Again, thank you. A great album. Uh, where can everybody get the album at? You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get it on iTunes, Best Buy online. You can get it uh, pretty much anywhere records are sold. Music is sold. Your local cool. record store, whatever. It should be pretty much everywhere. Very cool. And how about you? Where can anybody find you online? Are you on Twitter? Or? Yeah, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Jerry Gaskell. Pretty easy cool. to find. Yep. Very, very cool. And before right I let you go and play your music, can I just get you to cut a quick ID for me? This is Jerry Gaskell. And you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. All right, you got it. Hey, this is Jerry Gaskill, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Awesome. Jerry, thanks so much, and uh, good luck with all the uh, the album. We love it. Can't wait to play Thank more so for everybody. And, yeah, uh, play, play as much as you want, man. Play all of them. Play all those songs. Absolutely. <laughs> right on, We're going to play thanks. far away right now. So everybody, here it is from the new album, Love and Scars, from our good friend Jerry Gaskell.